now it's time to honor two men who have dedicated much of their lives to the prosperity of American agriculture. Those years of service have earned them the American Farm Bureau's highest honor, the Distinguished Service to Agriculture Award. Watch this video and you'll understand how Dr. Richard Crowder earned this tribute. The motto of Virginia Tech is ut prosim, that I may serve. These words also describe the career of Dr. Richard Crowder, adjunct professor in the Department of Agricultural Economics. Dr. Crowder has served agriculture with distinction in the private sector, government, and land-grant universities. A top U.S. agricultural trade negotiator over two decades, Dr. Crowder learned to handle stubbornness from mules and developed patience from his father. My dad was a bit of a throwback. Uh, he, uh, we grew up on a tobacco farm and uh, for years he thought that you only could uh, cultivate tobacco with mules. So uh, I walked behind mules uh, more days than I care to enumerate. Dr. Crowder traveled the world as Undersecretary of International Affairs and Commodity Programs for USDA and later as Ambassador, Chief Agricultural Negotiator for the U.S. Trade Representative. Trade negotiations, trying to put free trade agreements together, uh, going through the whole World Trade Organization process, uh, he put in a tremendous amount of time for our industry and we're uh, deeply grateful for that leadership that he displayed during his tenure. While at USDA, Dr. Crowder negotiated the agricultural part of the last successful multilateral trade round. It is important uh, that we have a rules-based trading system globally, and the WTO has a very important role uh, there. But in the interim, it is important that we keep our pressure on opening up markets uh, around the world and we need to be the first mover, if you will, in a lot of these negotiations. At Virginia Tech, he teaches negotiating skills and strategies honed at DeKalb Genetics, the American Seed Association, Pillsbury, and other food companies where he was a top executive. When it comes to trade, you need someone with a very diverse background, someone that understands what farmers and ranchers are looking at, but also, you know, our industry sector partners, whether they're in the food business, uh, the input suppliers, uh, you know, the chemical companies. Uh, he had a clear understanding of how all of us fit together as an agricultural economy and how important the international trade was to that success. Among Dr. Crowder's achievements is his work on the 1990 Farm Bill that gave farmers more planting flexibility to meet the needs of a global market. The two big things uh, that are driving exports are the competitiveness of U.S. agriculture and to the demand for products uh, outside the U.S. Uh, so those with a, a good policy framework uh, makes for strong growth in our exports and I think we're just at the beginning of a, a long and good trend. From driving mules as a boy in Virginia to driving a tractor in Russia, Dick Crowder has covered a lot of ground in service to agriculture. Always, he was able to see far down the road. I don't think you can dream too big for American agriculture now. Dr. Richard Crowder, winner of the 2013 Distinguished Service to Agriculture Award. Joining Dr. Crowder on stage is Philip Nelson, president of the Illinois Farm Bureau, which nominated Dr. Crowder for the award. Ambassador Crowder, thank you for your many years of service to agriculture, and I'm very pleased to honor you with our Distinguished Service Award. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, President Stallman, and thanks to the Illinois Farm Bureau for your nomination. I am honored by the award. However, I'm acutely aware that such individual recognition is the result of long-term support 
from mentors, colleagues, and organizations and family. This is certainly true in my case, and I'm indebted to many. The American Farm Bureau is one of those. Farm Bureau has been a leader in providing market and policy analysis, and its leadership was invaluable to me when I was at USDA and USTR. Bob, I know there were days when you left my office at USTR after like the third day of the week when you're saying, doesn't he have a staff of his own? <laughs> Bob and his staff were very supportive. And as you can tell from the, from the video, I've been around a long time. I've seen some huge changes in agriculture, but I've never been more optimistic about the future of agriculture. And your importance in the role you played in the past changes will be minor compared to the need that you will need to play with future changes. As we race to doubling the food demand in the first half of this century, agriculture will become increasingly high-tech and productive, become increasingly front-page news, become increasingly global, and become increasingly policy-driven. And with these changes, and as the number of farmers and ranchers declines, your role in trade policy and technology adoption in food safety and security and in communicating the importance of agriculture globally will become even more important. Many people have underestimated the potential and ability of agriculture to deliver since Malthus. There will continue to be doubters, and some will propose, propose policies that will hinder your ability to deliver, at least make it more difficult. But with your continued visible and active leadership, agriculture will continue to exceed expectations in the future. To borrow a phrase from Vespers yesterday, what you do truly matters. Again, I thank you for this award. It's a huge honor, and I could not appreciate it more. Ambassador Kenneth Quinn has dedicated his life to international relations and humanitarian efforts throughout the world, and that has earned him our Distinguished Service to Agriculture Award. After completing his diplomatic assignment as ambassador to Cambodia in 1999, Kenneth Quinn returned to Iowa and became an ambassador for world agriculture. Under his leadership, the World Food Prize has become what Dr. Norman Borlaug, its creator, wanted it to be, the Nobel Prize of Food and Agriculture. We've uh, endeavored to make uh, what was a sort of half a day uh, event that brought maybe 50 people from outside Iowa to it to an international event. And so we have a wonderful ceremony that, that I created, and we have the great privilege of doing it at the state capitol. We have a symposium that now draws more than 1,000 people from 70 countries, and we have a youth program to inspire the next generation of high school students that we bring all together for now a week-long set of events every October. Ambassador Quinn also led a $30 million campaign to turn the old Des Moines Library into the Dr. Norman Borlaug Hall of Laureates. He is very persuasive, he is very articulate, and he has the ability to bring people together around hunger and something that we all have a passion for. But he does it in a way that he celebrates agriculture, he talks about new methods of production, he's a promoter of genetic engineering and all of the methods that agriculture uses uh, to create a food supply. The Hall of Laureates is a museum with commissioned art and exhibits, a conference center for high-level events, and an education facility that will have a million dollars worth of learning tools when completed. I want the World Food Prize Norman Borlaug Hall of Laureates to be a place that everyone who's involved in fighting hunger 
around the world would want to come and visit once, come in and be inspired by Dr. Borlaug. Ambassador Quinn was inspired by the Green Revolution when in the Foreign Service in Southeast Asia. There he saw the value of miracle rice and rural roads in pacification. This combination of roads and rice could get at the Viet Cong guerrillas and unearth them in a way that even bombs and troops on the ground couldn't. And so it was a lesson I took away. It changed the direction of my life. I ended up working on these kind of issues for all, uh, almost all of my career. The World Food Prize winner is announced each year at the State Department, a testament to the ambassador's influence in linking agriculture with national security and peace in the world. The last 50 or 60 years have been, in my view, the single greatest period of food production and hunger reduction in all human history. Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, winner of the 2013 Distinguished Service to Agriculture Award. Joining Ambassador Quinn on stage are his wife, Laysan, and Craig Hill, president of the Iowa Farm Bureau, which nominated him for this award. Ambassador Quinn, thank you for your service to our country and the world. I'm very pleased to honor you with our Distinguished Service Award. Like say a few words, Mr. Ambassador. Well, President Stallman, my wife, Laysan, and I were in Philadelphia before flying here to Nashville. And you know, we met in, uh, in Vietnam, where I was a district senior advisor, DSA, with the same initials as <laughs> Distinguished Service to Agriculture Award. Uh, and, that. and so we went out for a Chinese dinner. And at the end of the dinner, they brought us the fortune cookie. I popped it open and took it out and read it. And it said, you're about to receive a great honor. So I thought, wow, this is the first time the fortune cookie, uh, fortune has ever been uh, right and uh, being here. And if any of you want to know the numbers on the back of it for Powerball or Mega Millions, I'm happy to share after on that. But this is a terrific, this is truly a great honor. You know, I, I've received awards at the White House, at the State Department, in diplomatic reception rooms, but, but I've never been with a size of a crowd this, this big. And to uh, receive an award that comes from the organization that represents more than five million farm families, to receive an award from the farmers and farm families of America, there could be no higher or greater privilege. And so I thank Craig Hill, the Iowa Farm Bureau for their nomination of me, for the wonderful support that they provide to the World Food Prize, to that building you saw from them and FBL Financial. And uh, it's, uh, I'm enormously uh, pleased with that. It's a great day for Iowans. We have Secretary Vilsack from Iowa, I'm from Iowa. Uh, I was thinking maybe Captain Kelly was uh, from Iowa, but uh, when I checked his bio, it's, he's not. But I'm sure when he was in orbit, he went over Iowa a couple of times. <laughs> but it was my privilege to work, though, with two other Iowans that have received this same award, John Ruan and Norman Borlaug. And uh, I, I see myself as, as carrying on Norm Borlaug's legacy, the man who saved a billion lives, who led the Green Revolution. And I know if he were here and he saw your slogan, many voices and one vision, he'd say, that vision is how do we feed the nine billion people that are gonna be on our planet by the middle of the 21st century. And he'd say, we need to inspire that research by companies such as those sponsors that are here, that we need to be bringing people together for the Borlaug Dialogue and 
so pleased that you brought the Russian delegation to Des Moines to the World Food Prize. Secretary Vilsack brought the ministers of Afghanistan and Pakistan uh, to, uh, to Des Moines because many voices and they speak many languages. But probably the most important thing that we can do is inspire that next generation, those young people Secretary Vilsack spoke about. And when I was walking outside, I didn't think I'd know many people here at the Farm Bureau Federation. And somebody yelled, Ambassador Quinn, Ambassador Quinn. And it was Shane Stevenson, high school teacher from Idaho. I don't know if you're here, Shane, but he, he stopped me and he, he said, oh, I hope you remember me. I brought one of my high school students to Des Moines for that youth institute so they could see Dr. Borlaug's legacy. And, that, and that's the kind of thing that we hope to build in Dr. Borlaug's name all over the United States, in every state. And I hope there could be a way the Farm Bureau and the World Food Prize and USDA and the Chamber of Commerce, we, we could all work together on that. Uh, 2014 is the centennial observance of Norman Borlaug's birth. I've been appointed by the governor of Iowa to chair a committee to choose an artist to make a statue of Dr. Borlaug because our legislature, Republicans who control the House, Democrats control the Senate, hard time agreeing on many things, but they passed in one day the resolution to put Norman Borlaug's statue in the U.S. Capitol. And our hope is on March 25th, 2014, hope you can be there when we unveil that statue and there will be that farm boy from Howard County who changed the world, who grew up in the culture that all of you, all of your life. And won't it be a great moment when you and your children or your grandchildren go in and there will be Norman Borlaug. I take this award as the encouragement to me and I pledge to you that I will continue all the years I have left to endeavor to build and fulfill that vision. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for this great honor. Ambassador, thank you for your great commitment to rural development and international relations.